Hey, this is Tanner Sherlock. I'm the pastor at Shadow State Chi Alpha. And this is our podcast where our mission is to make disciples who then make disciples. Be sure and subscribe so you can get our content every time we post. And I pray that this message blesses you today. God bless. Hey guys, um, for the sake of audio quality, um, this podcast has been pretty heavily edited. And so, uh, but what you get from um, Jack's testimony is is in whole, it's in its entirety. And so, uh, just know that, again, it's been heavily edited and I uh, hope it still blesses you. Amen. Hey guys, this is so scary. I'm going to be honest. Uh, I'm not very good at public speaking, so if I like mess up, feel free to laugh at me. It will sound cooler in the recording. So, all right, let's get into it. Uh, my full name is Jackson Mathis-Saren, and I was born in Ames, Iowa in 2004, making me 19 years old. Um, I was an unplanned child, which, uh, you know, take it as you want, but, uh, me and my sister were both unplanned and it kind of put a little bit of pressure on our family. In 2016, I moved to Phoenix, Arizona, and I don't really come from a Christian family. I'm the first Christian in our family, the first person that's kind of branched out onto their own spiritual path. Besides my, well, my sister likes rocks, you know, she likes the little crystal things, but I'm... I'm the only, like, spiritual Christian person in our entire family. Um, I'm a new Christian. I was only baptized about six, five, six months ago, and it was by Chi Alpha. It was by Tanner back there, actually, which is kind of sweet. I'm a business major. I took that major because I thought it was easy, and I plan on being a UFC fighter (laughs) after I'm done with wrestling. You you can laugh. I know it's kind of weird, but I don't know. It makes me, like, truly happy. Kind of strange, but eh. uh, also I don't know if you can tell, but I wrestle at Shadron State College. Uh, first of all, I do not come forward with this testimony to say that I am better than anyone. Um, I'm here to display Christ's effect within my life, and that is my only purpose. Uh, through my story so far, Christ's power is displayed, and I will continue to only give credit for what I've done through Jesus Christ. Um, I was born in Iowa, and I worked on a farm all throughout childhood, which is kind of, it's kind of okay. You know, it teaches you a decent work ethic. And when I first moved to Arizona, it kind of threw me in a loop because I was way too country for city kids. And I ended up getting in a lot of fights in middle school because I was bullied for being the weird kid. You know, I was, uh, I I grew up playing Yu-Gi-Oh, which I don't know if you know what that is. It's this card game. I, I still play it actually, but, uh, I grew up playing Yu-Gi-Oh, and I was always at that lunch table full of the weird kids who would play Yu-Gi-Oh, Magic the Gathering, and I was bullied immensely (laughs) for that throughout middle school into uh, freshman year. Well, I stopped freshman year of high school. I was like, yeah, I'm not part of those guys, but I I played at sixth through eighth grade. (laughs) You know what I mean? I was uh, was always at that table. Uh, Moving to Arizona, the kids were a little harsher. I would get pelted with oranges at recess by random kids. I would just catch an orange to the back of the head every now and then. Uh, I would get dumped into trash cans. I would just kind of get, like, jumped sometimes, which I know it's like you guys don't think it's typical, but Brandon's all, Brandon and D-White, they know it's, it's kind of pretty typical in a Phoenix school. Um, when I first moved to Arizona, my dad actually hated Arizona, and uh, he kind of took it out on me. Uh, he he took it out on me in more of a violent way. I would I would come home, and the only reason I really got into wrestling was because I wanted to learn how to defend myself from my father. I would come home, and I would get choked, slapped, slammed, like clocked. I was it was just a very bad time in my life, middle school through high school, and wrestling was honestly a great escape for me just to try and get out of my own household. Just because, I don't know, me and my father were not close then. We hated each other, and moving to Phoenix was very hard on him as he didn't want to move. Um, Because of this, I fell into kind of a cycle of self-abuse. I started abusing myself. And I don't know what self-abuse is to you, but um, to me, it's uh, excessive drug use, uh, excessive drinking, uh, sleeping around with others or, you know, having, like, a lot of sex uh, for 
if, you, if my terminology was bad, <laughs> and uh, self-harm. So, like, physically, like, cutting yourself, doing other stuff. I grew up kind of in a little bit of a dark place. And although I'm not proud to admit it, it's something that I have to admit to kind of give a little bit of background and depth to my story with Christ. I'm sorry if I'm blushing. I feel like my face is getting red. Uh, throughout my first year of college, I honestly didn't take wrestling that seriously at first. Uh, I got caught up with party culture, and I was using social outings unhealthily, and I was drinking almost every day with my, with my roommate, and I was uh, going out every night. Um, I was just abusing myself, and I was trying to suppress my personal <laughs> trauma uh, with that. And it honestly all caught up to me at one point. College wasn't very nice to me my first semester, and uh, I was very, I, would, I was kind to people, but I realized that not all people are kind to you. Um, I was constantly engaging in hookup culture and tarnishing my reputation around town. I was getting led on and used 24-7 because I didn't really know what, like, I didn't really know what, like, a good friendship was or, like, what good, like, actually being loved kind of felt like. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm on bullet notes right now. Uh, man, to say I let hatred consume me was an understatement. I hated everyone around me. There was a period of my first semester and into my second semester where I would just lock my door and I would just stay at home all day. And I honestly just wouldn't do anything. I wouldn't go out. I wouldn't text friends if we could, like, hang out or anything. I would just stay in my room cooped up um, all day. I hated Shadron. Uh, I hated myself and how I looked, and uh, I hated my own personality. I hated my own existence, uh, to kind of summarize that. Um, I had little to nothing or nobody in Shadron that I really felt cared about me, that I could reach out to. And uh, I let my own hatred and my own depression consume me in every action that I would personally do. Um, eventually, around uh, middle November, I had enough and I planned out my own suicide. It's not something I'm proud to admit or say or like flex in any way. Uh, it's actually something that I haven't recently admitted. Uh, I only talked about it with like my one, you know that one friend you have at home that you can just talk about like anything to? He was like the only guy that I actually... Uh, that I actually talked about it too. Um, I guess that years after being bullied, abused, and self-destructed, I didn't feel worthy of anything from anyone. I didn't feel worthy of love or of friendship, companionship. I didn't feel like I deserved anything. Um, I was broken. I felt useless. The same night I was preparing to end it all, I set up a game plan, and I got a text from Tanner, who's a, my pastor back there, I got a text from him at like 12, 11 a.m. And I know that sounds weird to you guys, but him and I play Fortnite sometimes. So he texted me and he was like, hey, when are you going to come to Chi Alpha? And when are you going to come get dialed in with Jesus? And when are you going to learn that, what real love feels like? Um, to be honest, I was weirded out. Because <laughs> I had never been texted at 12 a.m. by my pastor before. And I was like okay, I'll come in, I guess, you know. So I decided to put off my plan of committing suicide for a few days. Um, this caught me so off guard, honestly, for the few days leading up to it. I was honestly pissed off <laughs> that I made an obligation to someone because I genuinely planned on, you know, killing myself. Um, I don't remember why. I was just angry at the world. So eventually, you know, I didn't succeed with my plan. In fact, I failed. And... Um, before I knew it, I started going into Chi Alpha more, but I started to look at my life with a little more introspective, um, such as the fact that I was an accident upon birth. I was bullied my whole life. I was abused. I was used by other people. Uh, I was filled with hatred in my heart, and I honestly felt like I had no purpose of existing. Uh, the first sermon I ever heard Tanner say... Uh, was that whatever happened to me, happened to me for a reason, to shape me for who I am. And no matter who I was or what I've done, 
this Jesus guy is expected to love me, <laughs> you know? And when you hear about that at first, it comes off like, what? You know, if you've never prayed or known God's effect in your life, I know how it comes off. It comes off like, what? <laughs> you know, like this Jesus guy, he loves me this much, but I've been through all this. Why would he do that? And I was still filled with anger. I didn't know this Jesus guy, but I was expected to think that he loved me, and I wasn't sold on this idea, and I was skeptical to say the least. The more I learned, the more intrigued I was. As I began to dig into the Bible, I found ethics and morals in Matthew that have never led me wrong. And as I began to learn about Paul, who has literally killed men, I realized that I wasn't so bad for some of the things that I've done. I don't want to get too deep into Christ in the Bible, because there is a different time for that. Uh... But at my worst, I was nearly 300 pounds depressed and I was on the verge of suicide. With Christ in my life, I have quit so many of my harmful mannerisms. I've stopped over-abusing substances. I, started, I stopped caring about what others think of me. I stopped being ashamed of my love for Jesus Christ. And for those who doubt the power of him, I, I, I honestly tell you to look at me now. Compare me to then and look at me now. Uh, I started going to sermons. I started studying Jesus Christ, and I started learning what self-respect was. I started having no hate within my heart, which was a big one. Um, the more and more I looked into Christ and I learned to accept his words and his doing, I became more pure and more in touch with myself as a person. Christ's lo Christ love is endless and forgiving. Uh, it took me a very long time before I realized that Christ laid out my life for me before I lived it to show me something. Um, Christ has shown me, shown me through my countless mistakes, sins, and failures that I'm not only worthy of love, but that it's okay to fail. Uh, I would like everyone to open their Bibles to 2 Corinthians, and please open to chapter 4. Sorry, I brought my Bible. I just kind of stuttered a little. <sighs> Dude, the Chi Alpha translation is a little different. Um, I'm pretty sure it's verse 7 or 5 or 7. Uh, it reads, oh, it's, chapter, it's verse 7, all right. It reads, We now have this light shining in our hearts, but we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. This makes it clear that our great power is from God and not only ourselves. We are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. Through suffering, our bodies continue to share in the death of Jesus Christ, so that life of Jesus may also be seen in our bodies. I think this is honestly something very special. I was blinded by sin, and I hated my life. I hated Christianity, and... I didn't know what the goodness of Christ really felt like, but that yet the power of Christ I felt within me fulfilled my needs. When when I learned that I am a small part of grace of sorry of Christ's greater story, I was joyous in the fact that He chose me to do the things that I've done so far. And although I am fragile to sin like a clay pot, I will never for, I will forever guard the treasure that Christ died for. I've been pressed in by troubles out of my control, but I was never crushed. I was perplexed, driven to despair, and almost took my own life. I've been disrespected and laughed at for my love, the, for my love of Jesus even. I lived my whole life thinking I was a failure. And throughout all my faults, my sins, and some of my horrible choices, God has thugged it out with me, and Jesus refuses to leave my side. Um, I've suffered, but my suffering has been a great story to show off the life of Jesus within me. So please remember, you will be knocked down, you will be pressed thin, and you will be perplexed in this life. Perplexed in this life. But with Jesus by your side, you are never destroyed. Thank you. Thank you. Man, that was so powerful. Um, you know, Jack, 
I'm, I'm sure I've told you this, but man, you remind me so much of myself um, when I was in college. And uh, man, I'm so proud of you. I'm proud of your ambition to, to grow, to become a better person, to become a better version of you. Um, I'm proud of, of you facing head-on change, admitting that your life isn't exactly how you would want it to be, and so you want to grow, and taking that head-on. And, and I'm proud of you for recognizing that it's also not about you, that ultimately it's about Jesus, and it's about what He does in our lives and how He helps us to grow. And so, Jack, I just, bro, I'm blown away. I'm, I'm blown away how much you've grown and changed in just the last six months, let alone the last year. And, uh, man, keep it up. If you keep it up, if you keep that same ambition, that same push, that same drive, man, there's no limits to, to what you can achieve in this life with Jesus. And the lives you'll change because ultimately, you know, it comes down to God's going to want to do through you what he wants did in you. And he absolutely changed your life. He brought complete redemption to you and, and, uh, and even within the relationships in your family. And so, you know, just keep your eye open because God's going to want to do through you what he did in you and that he's going to help you to reach the next Jack. He's going to help you to reach the next student, the next person who is contemplating taking their life, the next person who's down and out, the next person who's bullied, the next person who struggled in life and is at his end and is saying, hey, you know what, I'm going to give it, I'm, I'm going to give one more chance, God, if you're real and God's going to use you to speak life into those people. And so keep an eye out and uh, continue to stay on guard and, and to continue to grow in your relationship with Jesus because, you know, ultimately that's. That's what God's going to do in your life. And I, I really do see that in you. And I see that ambition to show others Jesus and to, 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 to share what God has done in your life and to recognize that it's God that did it and not you. And that even though you've made the changes and you've grown, ultimately it's Jesus giving you the strength to do it. And so I just, again, I want to say, Jack, how, how proud of you I am. Um, and to kind of continue you know, ultimately tonight, uh, just want to just press on you guys, man, if you don't know the Jesus that Jack spoke about up here, if you don't know the Jesus that we talk about, man, I want you to, to take a moment and just ask him, ask Jesus to show himself to you, ask Jesus to, to show you that he's real, you know, um, in this world, Man, it can tear us up. It can spit us out. This life that we live can be brutal at times. But man, there's peace in Jesus. There's redemption in Jesus. There's life in Jesus. And without Jesus, the way we live our lives leads to, to death and destruction one way or another. Because we're always, we're constantly trying to fill that hole in our heart. There's just that, it always feels like there's just something missing in our life. That something is Jesus. He built us, he designed us to, to, to worship. And when it comes down to it, if we're not worshiping Jesus, we're worshiping something else. A lot of times we're worshiping our own comfort. We're worshiping an idolized version of ourselves. We're worshiping the, the system we work in, our job, the sport we play, the school that we go to. We're, we're idolizing the idea of perfection. And not that each of those things are inherently evil and that you know, we can have school be a part of our life. We can have sport be a part of our life. We can have comfort to be, even be a part of our life. But it has to have its place underneath Jesus. And we have to have those things in order. Start with Jesus at the top. Then, you know, our family, our friends, then our career, our school, our sport, and down the list. 
But it has to be in that order. It has to be Christ at the top, our relationship with Jesus at the top. And I think in America, we're really good about, as Christians, knowing that. We know that hierarchy. We know Jesus needs to come first. But we're also really good at telling ourselves that that's the order we have it in when in reality, our actions show it to be completely flipped. The dedication we give is to our sport first is to our school first, is to our work first. And then from there, it's to our family. And then from there, it's it's money. And then from there, and then somewhere in there, Jesus fits into that picture. And we tell ourselves because we spend 10 minutes with Jesus and we go to church that we're somehow putting Christ first in our life. But when in reality, we fit him into the idolized version of what we want our life to be. And we have to get better at putting Jesus first and recognizing when that order is off, when that order is skewed. When we do put Jesus first, man, it changes our life. It changed Jack's life. It's changed my life. It's changed the lives of so many of those guys around you. And so tonight we're going to go into a little bit of time of prayer and we're going to end the official part of service. But man, if that's you tonight, everybody bow your head, close your eyes. If that's you and either your version of Jesus has become skewed or you have maybe your priorities flipped or maybe you don't know Jesus. You don't know this Jesus that Jack talks about, that I'm talking about. If that's you, I just ask everybody keep your eyes closed. If that's you, and you know I'm talking to you, would you just raise up your hand? I see your hands. If tonight you'd like to give your life to Christ, if you're saying, you know what? I want that Jesus in my life. I'm tired of struggling with depression. I'm tired of feeling empty. I'm tired of feeling like there's something else. There's another hurdle that I need to go through in order to to achieve what I want to achieve. If that's you, I want you to be bold tonight. I'm going to ask you to stand up. Stand up and give your life to Christ. Amen. You guys can be seated. Let's close in prayer. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for each and every one of these young men and women who have decided tonight that they want to grow in their relationship with you. They're admitting that they're struggling with depression. They're admitting that they're hurting and they just, they want you. And so Lord, I pray that you would bring your peace, your presence, your protection, your love. Lord, you would provide all of their needs. Lord, for those who stood to give their life to Christ, we prayed uh, the prayer to, to give your life to Christ. We give them over to you. We ask that you would protect them against any attacks from the enemy, protect them against anything that would cause them harm. And Lord, that your will would be done in their life. And Lord, we give everything over to you. And we ask you, for help we ask you to come alongside us we ask you to guide us or we give ourselves over to you for your will to be done amen